Okay, so in order to understand electrolytic cells, we need to actually go back to the very early things that we learned in this chapter. So in the very beginning of this chapter, we learned about the galvanic cell. On the slide, you can see this is actually a very standard galvanic cell. So you have two solutions. Inside, you have your electrolyte. And then these two electrolytes was connected with your anode and cathode or electrodes. And then you connect the two electrodes with a wire. Inside the wire, you put a voltmeter. And then between the electrode solution, you put in the soul bridge. So under this case, basically the reaction is going to happen spontaneously, right? You are going to generate electrons. It goes from your anode okay, to your cathode. So the things we are going to learn today is that instead of doing this, let the things happen spontaneously. I want to actually reverse everything. So what I really do is actually I'm going to replace my voltmeter with a big battery. So when I put a big battery here, I'm going to actually reverse the reactions. So once you reverse the reactions, then the things is going to start to deposit on the electrodes. That process is so-called uh, electrolysis. So because of that process, it doesn't really need to actually separate these two things anymore because all you have just a simple, simple containers with all your reactants inside one single beaker. So in reality, when you actually look at your electrolysis cell, what you're going to have is actually you have all your electrolyte that are going to put inside one single beaker. So for this case, let's say you have your zinc 2 plus, copper 2 plus, those things actually existing inside your solution. You will still need your electrodes. And then right now the electrode was connected through a wire, but again, you put a big battery inside. The electron was actually generated from this battery. So electron is going to be generated from your battery and it goes into your solutions. Once the electron goes to your electrodes, since the electrons are moving to here, the cation is going to move toward to this source and then they are going to compete for the electrons. These cations inside your containers, okay, they are going to move to the electrodes and deposit on the electrodes. They are going to get reduced. And once they reduce, they are going to form actually a current, okay, and complete the loop. So let's actually the basic setup of uh, electrolysis cell, okay? So eventually, that's what's going to happen. So once the electron moves to here, so you can expect on this specific electrodes, it's going to go a reduction reaction because the cation is going to receive the electrons then they are going to get reduced. If it's gain electrons, it's undergo reduction. These things will call the cathode. Under the electrolysis cell, the reduction still happen at your cathode. The new things is that your ions inside your solution, for example, your copper 2 plus or zinc 2 plus in this case, they will actually move toward the cathode. Ions is going to move to cathode and the anions move to anode. So this is something that's unique in the electrolysis cell. Of course, inside these solutions, they are going to have some anions. So assuming you have boride or chloride anions here, because right now all the cations are actually moving to your cathode. Okay, so you actually push your anions to the other side. These things are going to lose electrons. So you will NIRs is undergo a oxidation reaction. Then it's going to produce the Cl2 and F2 to complete this electric circle. Previously, we say copper 2 plus got reduced. You become copper solid, so you got two electrons. Okay, and here is actually your zinc lost two electrons, become zinc 2 plus plus two electrons. So this is actually the galvanic cell. We know the E not cell is actually positive 1.1 volt. But right now, when we do the electrolysis cell, you're actually trying to push the reaction in the reverse order. In other words, in the electrolysis cell, you're going to push copper solid become copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And then zinc 2 plus now to gain 2 electrons to get your zinc. So when you do this, you can see that the E not cell is going to equal to negative 1.1 volt because you reverse the reactions. So your 
inner cell also change size. So you see a negative values of your electrolysis cell. If you just have galvanic cell, this reaction will happen spontaneously. Copper 2 plus become copper solid, or the zinc become zinc 2 plus. This thing will happen spontaneously if you have galvanic cell. But right now, what we really do is actually we want to reverse the reaction. So by doing that, now your E not cell become negative. Let negative sign means you can only make it happen when you provide a battery that have higher both than that. So if this one is actually, if the voltage differences between your battery is larger than your E not cell, then you can just drive the things backwards. So you can have the electrolysis to happen. For the electrolysis cell, you always always see your E not cell is actually a negative value. Okay, and that negative value represents the minimum voltage that your battery need to provide to drive the electrolysis steps. One thing you're going to use a lot is actually standard reduction table. If you look at these things more carefully, you will see that all the half reactions inside this table always shows that okay, some species plus electrons and become another species. So if you look at the very top, right, it's actually F2 get two electrons, become two F minus. So in this case, we will say the F2 got reduced and become F minus species. Similarly, we will describe here as the silver 2 plus got reduced, become silver 1 plus. We can see that when we say something got reduced, they always appear on the reaction side. Inside the electrolysis reaction, we know the reduction and oxidation happens simultaneously, but you only have the reduction potential from the table. To actually also know the oxidation potentials of the species. So if I want to find out the reduction potential of my H2O, then you check out this table. That's the things you can find, right? Because this equation highlights the H2O got reduced and produced H2. So that is actually the reduction potential of H2O. But if today I want to find out the oxidation potential of H2O, then you need to actually look at, at the product side. That is actually the oxidation potential of H2O, which is going to equal to negative 1.23. So if you want to look in for the reduction potential of certain species, then you check out the reactant side of the reaction. If you want to find out the oxidation potential of a certain species, then you check out the species at the product side of the half reaction.